The Command Gas Turbine Powered Helicopter, the first aircraft of its type to be flown. This helicopter, which was originally powered by a conventional aircraft engine of 190 horsepower, is now being used as a flying laboratory to demonstrate the advantages of the gas turbine as a power plant for rotary wing aircraft. The installation and testing of the turbine was done by Command Aircraft in cooperation with the United States Navy Bureau of Aeronautics and the Boeing Airplane Company, manufacturers of the turbine. There is an old saying that good things come in small packages. This adage has been borne out by the installation of the Boeing turbine in the Command helicopter. Certainly, the turbine is a small package when compared to the original engine used in the aircraft. The weight of the turbine is less than half that of the original engine. The turbine is more simple mechanically, having far less the number of moving parts. Lighter weight and mechanical simplification are but two of the advantages gained by the use of the gas turbine. Another advantage lies in the turbine's ability to operate on almost any type of fuel. For unlike the conventional aircraft engine, which must burn high-grade gasoline, the turbine can operate on gasoline, kerosene, or even diesel oil. And with only minor changes in its fuel system, the turbine can be run on propane or natural gas. The command helicopter being used to flight test the Boeing gas turbine is a twin intermeshing rotor machine which was originally designed for use in agricultural crop dusting and spraying operations. Since the helicopter was designed around a conventional aircraft engine having a horizontal crankshaft, it was a relatively simple matter to replace the original engine with the gas turbine which also has a horizontal shaft. The existing basic structure of the aircraft remained unchanged, only a new engine mount for the turbine being required. Because the turbine is a relatively small package whose dimensions are considerably less than those of the engine it replaced, it was possible to install the turbine on a light tubular tray mount totally within the confines of the helicopter's tail structure. The entire unit can be detached from the main structure by removing only four bolts making turbine repair and replacement simple and fast. That the turbine lends itself well to installation in the command helicopter is evidenced by the fact that it was not necessary to redesign any part of the rotor drive system. Here is shown the standard command rotor drive system, starting with the intermediate transmission mounted on the forward part of the turbine. The drive shaft from the intermediate transmission through the freewheeling unit to the main transmission. And the main transmission from which extend the rotor shafts. The teetering rotor hubs and the blade retainers. The rotor blades and all of the blade components. And the servo flaps which control the rotor blades are all standard command helicopter parts. The turbine-powered helicopter has been flown both with and without a silencer mounted on the air intake end of the turbine. Here is shown the turbine with the air intake silencer in place. Replacement of the silencer with a bell mouth air intake is easily accomplished. The noise level with the bell mouth is somewhat higher pitched than it is with the silencer, but it is not objectionable. An advantage of the bell mouth is that with it installed, it is possible to obtain three to five percent more horsepower from the turbine. Small radiators are used to cool the turbine lubricating oil and the main transmission oil. The radiators are mounted on the turbine exhaust stacks in such a way that the high velocity exhaust gases are used to pump cooling air through the radiators. Mounted on this right-hand exhaust stack is a barrel-type radiator used to cool the turbine lubricating oil. On the left-hand exhaust stack is mounted a smaller radiator which is used to cool the main transmission oil. This is a conventional aircraft engine in a Command HTK helicopter shown to point out the comparative simplicity of the turbine installation. The cooling fan, centrifugal clutch, and the engine cowling 
all necessary parts of the conventional engine installation are eliminated by the use of the turbine. Eliminating these parts substantially reduces weight and results in an installation that is much more simple mechanically. You see here the pilot's cockpit of the gas turbine helicopter. Controls are the same as those in a helicopter powered by a conventional engine. The only change that was necessary was the replacement of conventional engine instruments by those required for operation of the gas turbine. To start, the pilot throws the master switch. Using the thumb of his left hand, the pilot depresses the starter button on the collective pitch stick. The pilot opens the fuel valve when the starter is turning the turbine over at the required speed, and the turbine is then running under its own power. One of the more significant attributes of the turbine-powered helicopter is the extremely low noise level. It is possible for the pilot to converse with ground personnel in conversational tones while hovering. Let's listen to the turbine close up. And now let's hear a command HTK powered by a conventional aircraft engine. Let's listen to the turbine again. And so the command turbo rotor helicopter has shown the way to many improvements in the field of rotary wing aircraft. With its compactness and lighter weight, mechanical simplification, ease of maintenance, ability to operate on a variety of fuels, absence of vibration, low noise level, and its inherent power characteristics that make it the ideal helicopter power plant the gas turbine is well on its way to wide use in rotary wing aircraft. The military services and the aviation industry have long recognized the advantages of gas turbines as aircraft power plants. Jet fighters and bombers powered by gas turbines are today rolling off America's production lines. In a few years, large, long-range, high-speed commercial transports powered by gas turbines will be flying the airlines of the world. And as shown by the success of this helicopter, gas turbines are the coming power plants for rotary wing aircraft. It is anticipated that gas turbines will power a wide variety of rotary wing aircraft, ranging in size from the command helicopter shown here to very large machines capable of transporting many tons in both military and commercial operations.